Okay, welcome everybody. Questions? All the ones that are on that panel, I like. First Majestic, they qualify. Pan Americans on the list. All right, so everybody get out your cell phone right now. Here, and get to themorganreport.com backslash TMR. If you go to themorganreport.com backslash TMR, I'll give you a full report on this company that I'm talking about right now. It's actually two companies. So just get on to free list, it's totally free. It's something I've wanted to try for a long time where you just get everybody with their smartphones that's kind of glued to their hip or their brain. And it's a way to get a campaign going. So you will get the report. I, was good. I have it done, but I want to tweak it a little bit after this. I was thinking about this morning. So I don't get home until Thursday, the 1st of November. I've got a publisher Morgan Report paid version of premium service on the 3rd. So don't expect this free report in your mailbox probably to about the 4th or 5th, but you will get it. So there's my commitment to you. So I thought I'd start this off in the politically correct venue that we all live and enjoy in today. So wake up everybody, good morning. What <coughs> world, what are we offended by today? You know, I mean, everyone, is, I mean, is it a wackadoodle world today or what? I mean, I never thought it could get as bizarre as it is. And you know, I never really liked the PC thing, but I kept my mouth shut and it's just gotten worse and worse. I was reading an article this morning that white people are like 80% against PC. Like Hispanics are like 90% and Asians are like 99%. It's like, you know, not that I'm, you know, we have different races. Let's, can we, we accept that? And I don't see the feedback in my life that you see in the news. You know, I mean, I had two black guys help me awesomely in New York City when I needed help, you know, and they didn't look at my skin color. They just helped me out. I'm a human being. They're a human being, you know. That's what I see where I go, and I travel the world a lot more than most people do. So, you know, I think a lot of it is just a bunch of crap that's just poured over us to get us to think differently about each other rather than how we really are. But enough of my sociology experiment. What's offending us today? I don't know, but this is the best gold discovery. I've seen in 40 years, and I say with a bunch of question marks because it's really not a gold discovery. How many in here believe that we are at peak gold? Really, I think most of you should raise your hands, not because I'm an expert in the field, not because I study it daily, not because I live, breathe, and drink, you know, the mining industry, but, <clears throat> you know, we're mining. I mean, you got one of the a big, you know, well-known CEO and Keith Newmeyer, and they've got a project with San Dimas, they're making, you know, great cash flow in their gold projects. But I mean, you know, you talk to somebody like Lawrence Ralston, who you may or may not know, he used to write a newsletter, well-known geologist. And I mean, he said when he was young, they would walk over ground of, you know, one or two gram gold. Now we're mining it. You know, we are at peak gold. I'm pretty much convinced of that. The point I'm making is if you saw my presentation earlier this morning about silver and the silver industry, we talked about grade being king. And almost everybody that's at these conferences are involved with a junior mining company of one or two or 10 or 200. I mean, there's people that own every junior that's out there. You don't see that much anymore because the industry's so bad, but we have people like that. And everything about it is what is the drill result? If the drill result is, you know, eight grams, you know, or 16 grams, God forbid, you got 16 grams, you got half an ounce of time. And that's huge these days. These days, that is an absolutely huge grade. And yet this company is of a grade that's so astronomically high that if it came as a result of drill, there wouldn't be a chat room in Canada and the US that wouldn't be talking about and the stock probably would be up 10 or 20 fold right now. Because it's the perception of what everyone's been taught that it's gotta be a discovery. It's gotta be a drill result. It's gotta be this place that's never been drilled before or it's right next to this major mine and it's a new find or it's the next gold corp or it's the next whatever. And that's the mindset of the industry. But I've always been outside the box and I've been outside of the box of that box, if you catch my metaphor. I've always been pretty doggone open-minded so when this opportunity came to me, I was skeptical as I always am, because I'm very conservative in a way. But nonetheless, <clears throat> I, I glommed onto this and I've kept it secret for paid people or the premium service of the Morgan Report for about three years. 
And I decided it's time to just let the public know, especially the mining industry, because it's used people that really support the industry. If it's a one share at a time or a hundred shares or a thousand shares or ten grand or a hundred grand or, you know, financing the whole company. It's you guys. I mean, you know, again, you go back to Keith Newmeyer. I mean, Keith's gone from the ground up several times, and he's pretty modest about it. I mean, he's done a lot in this industry, as have others, of course. So now, let my passion create your wealth. I really do give you what I do. People, well, what do you do? How did you do it? Where did you get where you are? Blah, 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 blah. Well, pay me, and I'll show you. I'll show you. I put big money in big companies. I have more money in First Majestic than I have in this company I'm going to tell you about. Why is that? Because I know where First Majestic's going. I know I could rent my stock for a few you know, months and get a premium of 17 to 20 percent a year. I know when I traded just part of my portfolio in 2016, it went from, I think, four bucks to 21. I called that one perfectly. You know, we made 300 percent and silver only gone up like seven bucks. It's, you know, so that's what I do. But if you want to know what I do, you got to pay me. You know, if you want to know what I like and general market commentary, get on the free list. You know, I don't need everybody to pay me. I'd like you to, but you don't have to. So now more about my favorite subject, me. I, I'm a late bloomer, <clears throat> and I was, my second marriage started when I was age 40. So when I was in my 50s, I decided to start getting in better shape. So I started running triathlons. So that's me at age 50-ish, 55, I think. And the woman in the yellow, is uh, her husband was the first guy at my age group that I ran against in our club on a Olympic distance triathlon. And the last leg, the, the run, which is the worst part for me, I saw him coming back in from the turn point and I was going out. So I go, well, that's it. But that was one of those days where everything went right. <laughs> and I'm getting near the finish line and I see him ahead of me and I'm gaining on him. And I actually passed him up as she was shooting a photograph of him near the finish line, and I won that event for our team. So, funny story. So that's about me, and this is about me, but it's about you as well. I'm in this movie called The Four Horsemen Film, so if you type in Four Horsemen Film, it's on YouTube, you can watch it. It's about the age of empire and everything that happens in these cycles, the age of the frontiersman, the pioneer, how we go from basically grassroots. It's a metaphor for mining in a way. I mean, it's basically discovery, work, and over-promotion, and then you get into the age of decadence where we are now, and at the age of decadence, you have an, the end of the age of empire. And all of the key things that you see at the end of the age of empire are right in front of our faces right now. So recommend it's an hour and a half long, especially if you have friends, neighbors, family that don't believe what I've talked about for the last 20 years about where we are in an economic cycle. <clears throat> you can't watch this film and not come out with at least a different perception of where we are in the real world. Typical, this is one of the many pictures I have on my phone. This was a project in Arizona, and this is a private property mine. It's not a public company, but I love the name, Vulture Mine, <clears throat> and it's closed. So what got this whole thing started was this, and excuse the distorted picture, but it was a mobile mill. So someone that I've known and worked with in Silvermex before it was bought out by First Majestic, Hadn't done anything in the mining industry for a few years, and he called me over and said, well, you're an engineer, and I got this idea, and the idea is this. How am I on time? Is there a timer for me? Because I can't talk. I'm halfway there. Perfect. So he said, I got this idea that we can put together off-the-shelf components, string them together, recycle the water, and put it in what I'll call a mobile mill. And we'll just roll these things onto the property, and if they have gravity feed gold, we'll be able to self-fund the project, which is what every junior mining executive wants. He wants to keep his shareholder base strong and win, win the game of making money in the mining industry without diluting the shareholders. But almost every case, you've got to go refinance, dilute the shareholders, blah, 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 blah. You guys know the story. So he told me this idea, and I did the one-handed clap. I go, wow, that's brilliant. You know, I should have thought of that one. So saying it and doing it are two different things. So this was the second prototype. It was in Arizona. I went down with the entire crew, me, David, Chris. I don't think we had Bruce, but we had three of us. 
and we stayed there for days. It was about 110 degrees, so believe me, I've paid my dues to get this research to you people time and time and time again. It's glamorous at times, and sometimes it's not so glamorous. I'm getting a nod from Peter, but it's fun most of the time. So there we are, two very well notables in the industry, Bob Moriarty, 321 Gold, and our very own David Smith. Bob brought his famous pan and his, all his <coughs> stuff, and we proved proof of concept. This thing absolutely does take gravity feed gold and produce it at the end of the cycle. We do recycle the water and all this stuff is very good. And so that's the mobile mill. So as I said, we were there for three days and on the last day, Dwayne Nelson takes me to the side away from everybody and says, hey, can you stay another day? And I said, yeah, I can, why? He says, well, you're not gonna believe it. And I've heard that a few times in the mining business. I said, what? He goes, there's this guy who claims he has a reagent that's inert. You could drink it and it'll precipitate gold. And I want you with me, you're an engineer, you're a good thinker, you usually can feel people if they're real or not, come with me. I want you to be there. I want you to see this. I want your idea about it. I said, okay. So he booked me at the Trump Tower. I didn't know Trump was gonna be president. So I got a rock solid four hours of sleep, got up, put on my work clothes, and we drive out in the middle of this desert, and we drive, and we drive, just like one of these movies, this dystopian movies. I mean, you know, it's well, like the vulture gold mine, and we're out in the middle of nowhere. Finally, we get to the single wide trailer with these 50 gallon barrels all over the place, sagebrush, wind blowing, sand blowing. It's like, this is just like a movie set. And guess what? The guy's a no-show. So he drives me back to town and I get on an airplane and I go home. And we had a dis pretty good discussion on the way back from the no-show and I said, whatever you do, just get as much of it as you can, get it to Canada by hook or by crook and take it to three different labs and test it and see what happens. And he did. And it works. And so from the mobile mill project, it kind of morphed into what we call e-waste. Now this is my own personal camera. I never claimed to be a cameraman, but that orange bucket in the middle there is filled with gold and silver and other metals. And that is just nothing more than finely ground circuit boards. Just like Keith would do in one of his circuits and grind up rock and get it into a form of about that same caliber of, of thickness <clears throat> uh, or particle size would probably be a better way to say it, particle size. The same thing in the circuit board system. So we go through that. So B being skeptical, I wouldn't even write about this thing for about a year. And I just kept making sure and making sure and making sure because it's such a story. And this is all this junior mining industry is about a story. It's always a great story, but does it really work or does it really make you money? Uh, this is one of the chemist, again, my camera, and it works. And that's when I knew that uh, we were really on to something. So I kept it private for the you know, premium subscribers. And I started writing up the company because we had the big kaboom, you know, the light went off, it actually works, we've got to let people know it's worth a speculative investment. I've always been very careful, some of my picks have gone to zero, you know, some have been from zero to hero and some have been from a hero story to zero, and I'll admit that. And I've got a better track record than anybody in the industry. I've had more companies that I've picked that have become mines than anybody else. And I'm not a geologist, how does that happen, right? So. The story is pretty phenomenal. <clears throat> and to give you an idea, if you're looking at a, about four gram per ton gold mine, this is an analogy, it isn't like exact, and it's a bit of an exaggeration. I'm gonna show you another slide here after this one. That's why I was lucky to put in the latest presentation because I tweaked this up to the last minute. But you see some one <clears throat> ton of gold and then you see what you get from electronic waste. Now this varies because it depends if you're grinding up, you know, motherboards or RAM fingers, which is extremely high. It depends what part of the board you're looking at. What kind of board it is it? Is it a commercial? Is it a PC? Is it something that's used by uh, Intel or whatever? But the idea is sound. You're getting a lot of gold out of this electronic waste. The average smartphone has about a grade of about four grams a ton, whereas 
as I said earlier, some of these gold mines are mining, what, 1.2 grams per ton? This, I think, is a little bit better illustration. Why urban mining? By the numbers, gold recovery, mining ore versus mining e-waste. One ton of the mining ore, approximately 10 grams per ton, worth $400. Now, again, there's slanting this to like best case, but this is true. I mean, you have to back this up. You know, you can't write this stuff just because it's fun. But if you look at one ton of e-race, you're looking at 1,000 grams per ton. So there's a big difference. A really big difference. So one of our early investors that we had for the Morgan Report, and I gave this out to our Mastermind Series. The Mastermind Series is where we have a CEO like Keith or somebody, but usually not at his level, but down a couple notches that has a new company that they're bringing to the fore. And I have my AIs, my accredited investors and fund managers that follow my work because I have high integrity and I know they know what I'm doing. And they like to be early on the story. So they come in and we mastermind it. And we have the CEO will go through, you know, point by point and, and say that it's a non-brokered private placement opportunity if you qualify and if you're so, you know, if you're so inclined, then, you know, send an email to whatever or get a hold of David and he'll forward it to me or whatever. So on this particular case, this gentleman came in uh, on the early bird status and he is quite a character and he said, uh, this is like the yellow tennis ball. And I didn't get the metaphor at all. I goes, well, how many white tennis balls do you see in play now? And the answer is, so his metaphor or his analogy is that once you see this non-reactive inert solution that precipitates gold and other precious metals, or other metals, I should say, it's like the yellow tennis ball. You're not going to see cyanide much at all. And that's his take. I'm not saying I totally agree with him. But he made up this award. We presented it to Dwayne at one of the conferences I was at up in, in Vancouver, BC. Dwayne graciously accepted it. And that's really the end of the story. So if you did go to themorganreport.com backslash TMR, you'll get a little more detail than I was able to give you here in 20 minutes. Uh, it is about you. You know, it's a, I believe in the free market, which means I can benefit myself and benefit you at the same time. If you want to know how I invest, why I invest, what I do, what I do, how I find these companies, all that stuff, you know, pay me. If you just want to sit there on the sidelines and, you know, get some good commentary and know what I think on a macro picture and why I think uh, we're facing a, one of the biggest challenges we've ever faced in the history of mankind as far as how the economic system is being based on a huge lie is coming to an end and what you should do about that, then stay on the free list. Um, and if you just have that one particular question, you know, that one thing, that one place that's bothering, I do consult. I don't consult cheap. So if it's cheap, I, you know, I'd never get off the phone. So it's a pricey thing, but I've never had anyone that consulted with me one-on-one -on -one that wasn't happy. Now, occasionally I'll get a question that either I can't answer or won't answer. And if that's the case, you get 10 minutes for free and you're done. You know, I'm not going to hurt you. You get your money back. <clears throat> that's the face of the report. Not that it matters what it looks like. Uh, I've written three books on investing. They all revolve around the precious metals. But really, except for the first book, they could be used as an investor's guide as much as it could be for metals only because there's a lot of wisdom in all these books. Second Chance is written by David Smith here and myself. And the subtitle, of course, is how you're going to make big money in this probably the biggest wave up in the precious metals I think is ahead of us. And to coin, or to give credit to Jeff Christian, you know, Jeff says that 90% of the move comes in the last 10% of the time. And I think that's true. Just to build on that, and it's not an analogy, it's a fact. I mean, if you bought silver in 1965 when it was demonetized at $1.29 an ounce, and you held it through 1978, December 31st, it went up to six bucks. So in 14 years, it did that percentage, whatever that is. But if you were a rank speculator and didn't know anything about the silver market and bought it in January of 1979 at six bucks, it was 50 bucks a year later. So you got an eight-fold increase in one year where it took 14 years to go from about 29. So this is the kind of move I do think we are going to see in the next leg up in the precious metals. Does that make me right? No, it doesn't make me right. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but I believe that's the kind of momentum play you're gonna get. Because when this bond market and stock market crashes together, there's only really one place to go. 
and that's gold. That's why gold is God with an L in it. So another book Chris wrote, Chris and I wrote <clears throat> on the Silver Manifesto. Again, this is a general, it's a lot about silver, obviously, but there's a lot of chapters in there that apply to investing in psychology and how you really want to think about value investing. In fact, Chris did one chapter on how we pick a mining company and evaluate it. So if you do it yourself or spend 30 bucks, he shows you word for word how we evaluate, how to do a sensitivity analysis, why we rule out a lot of companies right from the get-go and that type of thing. I've got 14 seconds left. That's the first book I was in, The Ten Rules of Silver Investing. I was written in that. Don't forget to get on our free list, themorganreport.com backslash TMR. I am on YouTube and Twitter. And that is the end of the show. Thank you.